Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, a cat-loving introvert, a map of substance introvert, a travel agency, romance beginnings, manga news, and awkward moments. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Manga View. I'm your host, Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjourno, and what's up? Hope you're doing good out there in internet land. Hope you're excited for another fun-filled episode of this awesome podcast you can find at www.spyarkin.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, and various other social media sites. Just type in S-P-I-R-A-K-N. I guarantee you'll find us one way or the other. And with that in mind, let's actually get to it because I'm excited to talk about this awesome podcast. But if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Spyrokin, or some podcast that you about connecting dance narratives, is a nerdy topic where every week we talk about various nerdy things. This is a manga review. Obviously, we're talking about manga. I tell you the art style is, the overarching plot, and most importantly, if it's worth investing your time in or not. You don't have to agree with anything I'm my co-host say. We try to be educational, enlightening, exciting, and most importantly, entertaining. And if you're watching on YouTube, remember to like, share, subscribe, and click on that bell for notification. And also, definitely, if you are checking our website, remember to subscribe to hear our new podcast episodes at any time, which is on www.spotcon.com or iTunes or various other social media sites. So now that that's out of the way, let's actually get to the manga review of the week. Because if you remember from that last episode, I spun that one that only the Wheel of Manga... And it dictated me reviewing a pretty unique manga, a cool manga, a very, well, let's get to it. A manga that was written by Tamika Wakaki, the creator of The World God Only Knows, a manga that I reviewed all the way back in the double digits of this podcast. Kind of crazy that's been that long since I've reviewed a manga from this creator. This was published by Sugar Kuken or Seven Seas Entertainment and released originally in Weekly Big Comic Spirits. It came out in 2020 to 2023, and there are currently 10 volumes available. The series is complete, which is pretty awesome, and it is a comedy drama, romantic comedy, that has an anime adaptation coming out later this year, and there is a live action version, which is currently available to watch on Amazon Prime, subtitled. It's actually really faithful. It's one of my most faithful reviews I've seen in a long time. But I digress. This is a Senen series, and the original name for this was Kikon Sure Honto Deska, but in English it is known simply as, well, let's get to it. It's going to be known simply as 365 Days to the Wedding. And this is the story of two people who decide to create a lie in order to not go to Siberia. I know, crazy. But. We have our main characters who are two people who have a very unique job. They work for JTC Travel Agency, which is a parody of the JTB Travel Agency, which is available throughout the world. If you've never dealt with them before, here's the deal. JTB in Japan will tell you how to get to other places, and they will set up tours and guides and events in throughout the world. If you go to a JTB location outside of Japan and any of the countries that are available, they set up unique tours and events for you to go to in Japan. I actually, when I went to Japan, I went through JTB to get my J-Rail pass and to also get my first Wagyu dinner experience, which was amazing. I also did a couple of tours with them, so they are pretty cool. And they do tons of things as well. And we actually have one of our two uh, main characters who has a pretty unique job. This is... Oharu Takuya, and he is one of the two members of the tour planning group. Pretty much his job in the organization is he designs the tours for the customers. So everyone else says, oh, you should come to Hawaii. Hawaii is amazing. Meanwhile, Ohara's job is to make sure that he knows exactly where everyone is going. We've planned what they're going to eat, what they're going to see, what they're going to do. That is his job. Also his partner's job as well. And when people talk to him, he's pretty shy. He does not give eye contact. He's a little, you know, he's, he's a shy person. And most people think that he's spaced out, but it's just he can't think what to say. It takes him a little bit of time because he's very nervous. And this shows in his ability. Like his partner, who is the other main character, Joji Rika, scares the hell out of him because she's so serious and he thinks he's offended her or something's wrong, but that's not the case. We'll get to her in a moment. The only place he feels relaxed is when he goes home to his cat, Kama. And Kama is 
essentially the love of his life, the most important thing to him, but Kama will not give Ohara the time of day. Uh, Kama was rescued by Ohara and now is just super skittish, super scared. And at this point, now we'll show him his tail and his butt. So it's getting there, but this is the place he relaxes and is kind of zenned out. This is him. Now, as I said before, let's get back to uh, Honjuji Rika. She is his office mate and also the other person in the tour planning department of JTC. And she is super serious. Everyone thinks that she does not want to talk to anybody. And she has kind of raging bitch face on her face. But that's not who she is. She's actually pretty awkward. Isn't good with social situations. And she has a lot of issues. Most importantly though, she is a map aficionado. Her thing is studying and obsessing over maps. She has enough maps to fill a 3 Tatama mat storage uh, facility, which pretty much means she has enough for six feet by 21 feet worth of maps. She's obsessed with them. She studies them. She plans adventures on this. She actually plans routes and she obsesses over them because when she was a child, her mom was always traveling. Her dad wasn't in the picture for reasons. We'll get to that in a bit. And she would just imagine she's where her mom is and figure out how to get there and just visualize in her head what to do. Like, okay, we're taking, we're going to take a trip from Tokyo to Fukuyama, so we have to take the Senen train to here, and then I'll look at the castle. But the castle's over here, and there's a beautiful view. Like, she's obsessed about it. But that's her happy place, and she loves it, and it makes her happy to, like, on her days off, go to places she sees and explore. So she has a little bit of a wanderlust, just she's not good with people. And so, why are these two people involved in this situation that I explained? Well, let's get to it. Their boss comes up to everybody and pretty much tells them that the higher-ups have decided to open up a new branch in Irksk, Siberia. Yes, I know crazy. They're opening up a tourist division in Siberia. Who's going to want to go to the middle of Russia? Well, who freaking knows? But because of that, they're taking one of these salespeople from this branch, because they're the best branch, and making them the new manager of this branch in Siberia. So, and uh, the last person who got a promotion like this went to Tahiti. They've been there 10 years. They're now a local person. A lot of people are upset about this. But the manager says, okay, here's what's going to happen. Because married people, it's a little bit harder to move. We're going to take single people first. They're prioritized. So that's who we're going to look for. And in 365 days, one year, that's when the branch opens. But we'll let everyone know relatively soon. So everyone's kind of panicking about this. Specifically, O'Hara's panicking because, well... He doesn't want to leave Kama. Kama is not going to be able to go to uh, Siberia. He'll be super stressed out and it's not going to be good for, well, her actually. She's a her. And, well, let's be honest. Hojuji is not happy either because she just doesn't want to move there. It's going to be freezing cold and she's already socially awkward. She'll be worse socially awkward in a new area. Won't be near anybody so she doesn't know what to do. So, and as she's debating on what to do, she gets an idea. Because one of her coworkers said, well, if you want to get out of it, just get married. And she says, well, why don't I find someone to get married to? And then we will make it work. And then they won't move us because we're getting married. And then after uh, they pick the person and they move, we'll just break up and it'll be all good. So that's her plan. She just needs to find someone to marry. But she doesn't know anybody. She's not good with someone. And then... After a meeting in the park, she decides to tell O'Hara, why don't we get married? I want to marry you so we can get out of this. This way, we'll pretend it's a marriage. You get to stay here for your cat. I get to stay so I don't have to move and all is well. It's going to be really easy. We're going to plan it like one of our uh, tours. So we'll have all the itinerary. We'll make up what our first date was. We'll make up what we proposed for. And then when they ask, we'll say we're going to get married this day. No one's going to worry about it. It's going to be well. And O'Hara agrees. So they're going to kind of create a relationship. And this should be fine because no one's going to ask questions. No one's going to obviously look at this. And it's there's going to be no problems. It's going to be very smooth. That's what they think. 
I mean, the first thing that happens is immediately when they bring up the fact that they're engaged, their supervisor, Kurakawa Asako, pretty much is like, oh, you, I didn't realize you guys were a thing. And they say, well, we didn't want to let the department know because we're gonna, we didn't want to cause problems. And instead of her just saying, okay, that's it, she gets super excited and she hugs them. Oh my God, you're getting married. That's awesome. Congratulations. Hey, everybody in the office, they're getting married. And if you've ever been in an office and found someone's getting married, obviously everyone goes kind of crazy. And for these two socially awkward people, this is social overload. And they both kind of freak out about it and collapse, which is kind of funny. But then to compound the things to make it a little more crazy, their coworkers decide, well, why are they getting married so fast? At first you'd think, oh, it's because they want to get out of the, the Siberia trip. But most of them think realistically, it's because probably Rika, uh, Joji, is pregnant. And this is a shotgun wedding, so they got to hurry this up. Not exactly the problem. So things look good the next day. The next day, no one's panicking. Uh, they have to, they're told to do some work. But then the company decides to throw them a huge party for their engagement, an engagement party. Things are already getting out of control at this point. And then let's throw in the fact that because this is a very big company, eventually one of the parents finds out about this through, they go to JTC in their town and say, oh, we heard your son who works in our other branch is engaged. So when, where did they meet? When are they getting married? And that makes things a lot worse. So this lie is just compounding and going more and more crazy. And are they going to be able to keep this lie or are they going to uh, fizzle out or what's gonna happen when they start getting feelings for each other are they gonna keep this as a lie or is this gonna be bloom into a real romance and that's what the story is about and it's an engaging one that is beautiful and well written and witty and has some great moments that give you the feels and I'll admit our two main characters do not have Riz they don't have charisma. They are very just kind of like one is super scared and is a, a super shy person. And the other one is someone who's super socially awkward and they're trying to get together. Eventually it becomes, they start getting into the paces and bettering themselves and seeing them fall in love is great. And seeing the little things they do for each other. And we see this, um, spice, spice and cat obsessed, glasses guy and this map obsessed socially awkward girl become a couple and develop into something and i don't want to spoil anymore because a lot happens we have tons of side characters that are introduced and a lot of just great moments there but i digress so overall what can i say about this series except that well the story and the art is well done and when i after reading this, I had to check out the adaptation. The adaptation is 100% faithful. And I'm excited to see this as a, well, I want to see this as a real anime, which is coming out soon. The production quality is great. You can see it is well done. You have a little bit of color in there, but for the most part, it is black and white. We get some fun little elements in the back, including some descriptions of the actual coworkers. And just there's some... Each coworker is different in design. I mean, we have the one guy from Hawaii, George San, who, if you read further in, he has a super depressing uh, backstory. We have uh, Shinshi, who is Mr. I'm Married and Life is Wonderful. Things change for him very rapidly. And then we have Gonda, Gon, who he becomes their good friend and helps them out because he's inspired to better himself because he calls uh ohara sensei because he got a girlfriend he could teach me how to get a girlfriend and then he has a subplot which i have to admit the end of it makes me smile so this is a great series i know only one volume is out but i had to read more and i'm buying volume two because this is great so for that reason as you probably can guess i'm gonna have to give this manga well a really really cool read it now it is amazing. It is probably one of my favorite mangas I've read in a while. I know I, I use, I've been throwing out really, really cool a lot lately, but this one is a great manga. It is one which is, if you're in a place, you'll get it. If you're not in a place for this, you won't like it, but I guarantee it is a fun ride. And it is worth checking out. Uh, if you've read this, email me, zanspirekin.com, or tweet me at Spirekin. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you 
Uh, let me know if you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you've watched the adaptation, which is called Map to the Wedding, or if you're excited for the anime, let me know. And with that in mind, let's actually get to something a little bit cooler. Let's get to the random question of the day, which is going to be, what are your feelings about marriage? Do you like them? Do you, do you not like it? Do you think it's an antiquated thing that shouldn't be done anymore? Do you think it is a romantic um, tradition that should be kept? What are your thoughts? Let me know. Email me zansbyarkin.com or leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on if you like marriage or if you think it is just some hokey, antiquated thing. But with that in mind, let's actually get to something a little bit more fun. Let's get to the manga releases of the weekend. We've got some fun ones and some crazy ones going on this week. So, starting off from the top, we've got... As a reincarnated aristocrat, I'll use my appraisal skills to rise in the world, Volume 9. I know, Volume 9, we're, we were getting there pretty fast. But next, we have... Cells at Work Omnibus 2, which is Volumes 2 through 6 of the series... So if you love Cells at Work and don't want to spend the entire price, this is a better deal for it, and the series is well done. I'm hearing that once this omnibus is finished, they are going to be doing the Cells at Work Baby and then Cells at Work Black. So we'll see where they, those are. Anyway, next we have, Didn't I say to make my abilities average in the next life? Everyday Misadventures, the manga volume 4. Guardian Zen Hua novel volume 2. The Hidden Dungeon Only I Could Enter, Volume 10. The Ideal Sponger Life, Volume 15. I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess, Volume 3. Magical Angel Creamy Mommy and the Spoiled Princess, Volume 6. My Cute Little Kitten, Volume 2. Sailor Moon Naoki Takuchi Collection, Volume 6. Seraph of the End, Gurin Ichino's Catastrophes at 16, Volume 3. Tengen Hero Wars Volume 1, and then last and certainly not least, we have Tokyo Revengers Omnibus Volume 17 to 18, and those were the manga releases for this week. And for my top five for this week, the ones I'm most excited about, let's go to it. First off, as an aristoc reincarnated aristocrat, I use my appraisal skills to rise in the world Volume 9. This manga series has been a lot of fun, and so many unique things have happened in it. I can't wait to see where this goes. This is a personal favorite, and I can't wait to review this on the podcast itself. But digress. Next, we had Cells at Work Omnibus 2. Cells at Work is just a great story about and teaches you a lot of things about health and also how cells work. Then Ideal Sponger Life 15. This is a fun, dumb series about a guy who is a to a world and gets married and pretty much is a lazy bum. And I don't know why I like it, but I like it. And actually that plus this manga has inspired me to work on a new panel for some new con Conventions, but that's going to be in the pipe work. I'll bring it up when I finish making it, but I digress. Next, we have I'll Never Be Your Crown Princess, Volume 3. I've been hearing a lot of buzz about this series. I have to investigate it, but supposedly it's really good. And then last and not least, we have Tengen Hero Wars, Volume 1. This one is one that has been on my radar for a little bit. I can't wait to read this. So which of these are you most excited about? Uh, what are the mangas that you enjoy? Let me know. Email me zanspyarkin.com. Tweet me at Spyarkin. Let me know your thoughts. But beforehand, let's get to something a little bit more important. And I want to thank all of you who are checking out this podcast or listening to it. I appreciate each and every one of you. Every email I get, every comment I get, every new subscriber. It gives me more motivation to keep doing this podcast. I love doing this. I love talking about manga, recommending manga, even selling manga, uh, which I do at my my real job but I love doing this and I want to keep doing this till I'm an old man who has to read manga with thick glasses and a magnifying glass and reading large print manga because I love doing this so thank you for letting me be able to do this and I appreciate each and every one of you and I'm going to keep doing this till I'm at least at a th episode 1000 of the manga review I promise so with that in mind let's get to the part that you have all been excited about but before that remember like, share, and subscribe. Uh, definitely subscribe to our website at www.spyarkin.com. Subscribe to the podcast. And let's get to it because it's that part that so many of you are waiting for, the most popular part of this podcast. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about that one. That only. The Wheel of Manga. 
Yes, friends, the Wheel of Manga, except the substitute. Now, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on. What I've done is I've assigned a manga title to each of the 10 slots. We're going to spin the wheel. Whatever number it lands on the manga that's in that title is what I'm going to review in the next episode of the Spire Card Manga Review, episode 543. I'm excited to see what we're going to review next, so let's spin and see what we're going to review, shall we? Number five again. Been landing on five a lot lately. May I'll just stay, stick on this one to read it. But the next one we're reviewing is a manga called Smoking Behind the Supermarket, which apparently is about a, a guy who literally smokes behind a, a supermarket with one of the supermarket girls. Who knows? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Well, we're going to sit and find out. But anyway, hope you enjoy this episode. And as usual, I'm your host, Zan. I'm Gonsville. Catch you guys next time and keep reading manga. See you later.